Good evening, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, European markets for end of day's trading session, the uh, Wednesday, the uh, 16th of November 2016. Be, please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the uh, Apple uh, App Store. Okay, now let's uh, see exactly um, what happened today and uh, basically uh, what transpired in terms of. European markets in the uh, session today. Now we certainly have the US markets closing down relatively weak compared to the, uh, uh, shall we say, the NASDAQ and also European markets certainly lackluster as well. So we'll certainly get to the bottom of this. Now in terms of the um, UK markets, certainly closed negative. FTSE down 40 points, 0.6% negative. DAX negative 0.6%. Certainly has been lagging along with the French CAC as well, all certainly closing down. Now, one of the major concerns for European equities uh, really is going into the weekend or even going into next week. The euro was the only currency that struggled against the dollar on growing concerns about this weekend's elections in France and Italy's referendum on Senate reform in early December. So you have um, this uh, Miss Le Pen character, uh, another, um, shall we say, a Farage clone, uh, Trump extremist, radical, uh, misogynist, bigot, racist, call him what you want, basically, um, basically an extremist um, and um, radical that really wants to take France backwards, okay, so, and again, Italy's referendum as well, and Senate reform, again, that has implications in terms of, uh, obviously, political viability in the, within the Eurozone and whether they can actually uh, unite uh, as a force, uh, and uh, given the Brexit negotiations as well that are certainly um, coming forth uh, and whether or not we can or they can united uh, well certainly present a united front and uh, actually tackle these uh, brexit negotiations so uh, there is a latest article with regards to brexit apparently there's a hundred billion uh, sterling uh, hole uh, post brexit okay so again uh, in the budget so again that will obviously raise concerns as well uh, the FTSE certainly has been lagging due to the uh, concerns regarding Brexit. So if the uh, EU nations are not uh, united themselves, how can they then obviously um, put forth an argument versus the UK? Okay, so again, certainly isn't uh, a good uh, potential, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, in terms of uh, the path for Europe going forward, certainly doesn't bode well. And that's one of the reasons why the euro has been so weak. Now, obviously, we attribute the weaker euro with a rally in the German DAX, and that hasn't been the case because the euro has certainly been heading south, sub 1.07, uh, and uh, certainly the DAX hasn't been inspired to rally. So that certainly is a cause for concern, okay? And given the fact that the euro is down to 1.07, again, that certainly puts forth another argument that Mr. Draghi no longer needs to do QE because he all he needs to do is rely on Mr. Trump's reflationary trade or rely on Yellen hiking rates and... That's done the job for him because the whole concept was that you uh, wanted to debauch your currency in order to make your exports more competitive. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Okay, so it's interesting how long the dollar can actually go higher with you know, US equities uh, until it gets to a point where it's actually co it's a cause for concern. And then you have obviously a reversal in equities and, and, and even a reversal in equities and a fair, a, a fair well, increased fear will actually just basically sustain the dollar rally even further because um, the last place you want to go hide is the Aussie and Kiwi and definitely not the Japanese yen. So the dollar certainly seems to be the safe haven. Okay, so although you do have the CHF as well. so And also gold prices, certainly watching a potential uptick in gold as well. Gold certainly has stabilised though, uh, around that 12-10 level. So again, another argument there for gold to move higher and uh, obviously uh, trigger a risk aversion. So... Again, multiple multitude of uh, possibilities going forward, okay, in terms of the fundamental uh, outlook. So you just have to be flexible and adjust with the market and the prevailing bias. Okay, now in terms of um, technicals, let's give you the technical picture today. Really, it wasn't much uh, other than the fact that you had the UK claimant count uh, rising, uh, although uh, unemployment numbers certainly fell. Uh, although, again, it's subjective, folks. One would argue that the, um, the wage growth certainly was slightly below par but uh, nothing really of major concern it certainly to show that the uk economy remains resilient etc etc other uh, analysts have argued and economists have argued that this is a um a really uh, a harbinger of what's to come okay in terms of weak wage growth in terms of weak employment levels etc etc post brexit so 
Uh, it certainly is a taste of what's to come. So it's um, it's interesting, okay, interesting in terms of fundamentals. Now, uh, Mr. Carney, again, obviously, as we know, Mr. Carney and co. Uh, certainly did talk up inflation, certainly, uh, certainly painting a hawkish picture. So no more chance of, um, uh, of additional QE now because they've gone neutral. And again, that's obviously hurting the FTSE compared to the rest. So European equity should technically get bid if the UK is obviously going towards uh, the hawkish stance or neutral stance, given the fact that the ECB is overtly uh, uh, very, very dovish. Especially given the uh, tapering talk that we had in the Eurozone, Mr Draghi certainly uh, quashed that very quickly. So interesting, OK, it's interesting scenario, interesting possibilities. You just have to remain open-minded. That's all I can say. Okay, now in terms of technicals, I think I've uh, certainly covered the fundamentals there to a large extent. There's nothing really from Europe that really was of any major, major importance. Yes, we did have the PPI inflation data from the Euro U US certainly weaker. Uh, we had industrial production certainly weaker as well. Uh, UK uh, CB leading uh, CB leading uh, economic index certainly came in slightly stronger. Uh, crude oil stocks uh, supply certainly came in on the weaker side, so excess supply there. And again, overnight, nothing really of any major concern. Obviously, the RBA is going to be quite volatile. Again, not really of any importance to us. Now, we do have CPI data tomorrow in Eurozone. ECB monetary policy meeting accounts, whether or not that will have a major effect on the euro. Again, we've already seen the fact that the euro really is dominated by concerns with regards to the French election and obviously uh, uncertainty regarding uh, the Italian referendum. So again, that certainly is weighing on the, uh, on the risk and sentiment from the eurozone okay so let's look at the german dax now daily chart you can see here certainly rejecting 10800 remains weak okay in the daily chart 60 minute chart the german, german dax has its hns formation obviously it's in play okay hns target you have 10800 <coughs> excuse me and you have uh, 10680 so you're looking at a 120 point drop so you are looking at 10680 minus 120 you're looking at uh, 105 60 if i'm correct okay so you're certainly looking at a flush here okay in terms of the flush you have previous resistance equal support 10480 so 10480 certainly isn't out of the equation if the market really starts to move lower then you are looking at the support back at 10350 so con conclusion is watch out below that's all i can say okay watch out below you do have support here around the 10570 level which obviously would be uh, interesting 10 Sorry, 10,650 if I'm correct. Okay, so you have the pivot lower on 10,650. Uh, your pivot high is 10,800. So you're looking at 150 point drop, 10,650. So 10,500, uh, it certainly makes sense. Okay, so looking at 10,480 on the downside. So you're looking at a flush on the uh, German DAX. Okay, folks, going into tomorrow. So we'll certainly watch out for that. Now, I'll just draw this in. I can just share it with subscribers on the live analysis service. So this will be interesting. Okay, dokey. Now I'm going to try to make these videos quicker. Uh, I really need to do that, but the amount of things I have going on. Okay, so um, oh, I headed out to London tomorrow as well. So, okay, so HNS, you have 10,800. Okay, let's just write this in 10,800, bang on, minus 10,650, which is your neckline. And you're certainly looking at a potential target of 10,500 on the downside. So, 150 point drop. And again, that's your uh, basis. Now, I've already forecast a potential. Um, Sell off in the US markets again, Asian markets will dictate. But my analysis is that we're certainly heading south and quite fast as well. And your German DAX certainly has this HS formation, so it certainly does tally up with the uh, the bias. Okay, so let's uh, look at this. Okay, okay, so. So you're looking at a uh, move lower. Okay, so the German DAX is weak, the rest of Europe is weak, and you are looking at risk aversion. Okay, now in terms of the uh, the actual German DAX, let's just cover this from a technical perspective. Now you do have support down here at 10.575, so watch out for 10.575, folks. Okay, important to watch out for 10.575. Now if I connect the, uh, the actual uh, highs together, uh, certainly hasn't been respected. You can connect your previous support equals resistance, and that certainly has been respected. So you are looking at resistance on the uh, DAX around this 10.670 level. Certainly an impressive bounce from that 10.620 pivot S3 uh, low on the German DAX. Okay. Now uh, let's look at the French CAC. Let's see exactly where that stands. D daily chart certainly remains weak. Okay, so bearish continuation pattern there. 
uh, 60 minute chart you did actually hold that low so again it'll be all about breaking that low and we did actually close that gap as well so watch out for that low but from my perspective you are looking at a lower high and again you're retesting previous support equals resistance so looking for a a flush okay on the uh, french cac let's just have a look here so you have tech pivot s3 coming into support so again watch out for that zone okay this certainly needs cleaning up this chart okay so resistance on the french cac is seen at 10 4 5 20 and obviously 4 5 15 which is the 200 ma so watch out for that okay now in terms of FTSE 100 FTSE 100 again has been weak you can see here the red candle dominating failing to get above the uh, key resistance zone above so the red candle certainly in domination 60 minute chart certainly looking still still looking weak on the FTSE you're the 6713 and then you potentially retesting the 6680 zone below so watch out 10 minute chart as well okay so uh, just to clarify there in terms of the FTSE 100 you can certainly see that we have support on the uh, FTSE in the region of 6730 you have support at 6715 and if the market continues to flush then you have support at 6680 so watch out for those potential support zones 10 minute chart on the FTSE 100 certainly a potential uh, base being built here at uh, 6737 you have a bottoming tail as well going towards the close we certainly have closed the gaps all the gaps gaps certainly have been closed on the uh, FTSE 100 so uh, certainly observe although having said that just before I mentioned gap I totally ignored the gap below which is at 6725 so certainly a potential possibility of that 6725 gap closing as well let's see if we can crack 6735 first and then we'll certainly open the floodgates below uh, my analysis of the uh, US markets certainly are, are going to be weak, certainly looking to potentially gap down overnight, and especially Asian markets certainly weak as well. So I'm looking for a flush, that's my uh, understanding. I bring up the S&P 500, also the NASDAQ as well. Let's just bring up the NASDAQ first of all, a daily chart, you're into that FIB, 61% uh, now looking for a potential reversal, okay, on the NASDAQ. 60 minute chart, certainly approaching that 200 MA, so certainly looking weak. And then obviously you have the unfilled gap below. So you have an unfilled gap here at 6700, unfilled gap at 6660. So certainly leaves it vulnerable to the downside. In terms of the S&P 500, let's just bring this up. You have a H&S formation. So looking for that flush to uh, occur. 60 minute chart, you have a double top. And the daily chart, you can clearly see that we're holding that potential uh, topping tail, which is seen at 2182. So certainly bear that in mind, okay, in terms of the uh, trend in the markets. Now, the uh, actual uh, Asian markets, again, this is quite important to my analysis. Uh, my Nikkei, or my Nikkei, or should I say the Nikkei, certainly holding resistance here at 17,910. You have the USD JPY potentially topping out as well, US dollar topping out as well. So, again, looking for a flush based on that. Now, you have the 10 year bottoming tail on the 10 year, so therefore indicating a potential dollar reversal. So, the end of the reflation trade. End of the reflation trade generally means end of the uh, the actual rally as well so bear that in mind okay now let me just bring up the USD JPY here okay so USD JPY in the daily chart you can see a topping tail and now looking to potentially reverse 60 minute chart certainly showing weakness as well okay four hour chart certainly showing weakness too so certainly looking for a reversal looking for a flush especially with the Nikkei certainly being into resistance now the Shanghai index as well certainly holding resistance here okay horizontal resistance being held and now looking for a potential uh, flush okay so again bias is bearish that's my understanding and certainly looking for weaker prices be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the bonus goodbye